nowhere. He's stuck on the back foot with the weight coming back rather than looking to come forward to the ball. The ball hurried onto him, got the inside edge. It shot straight down by his feet and back onto the stumps. And there's the fourth wicket for South Africa falling in the first session here at St George's Park. And the South Africans are really in trouble. They would have wanted to win the toss. They didn't. Mark Taylor has sent them in. And it's McGrath and Gillespie, as you see the body moving back. The momentum was going backwards when the ball hit the bat. Therefore, the ball was more likely to go down and back onto the stumps. That's exactly what it's done. The South African captain's on his way. And South Africa are in real trouble here at St George's Park. At the end of the first hour, they're four for 22. Lovely shot, lovely footwork. Coming forward to the fast bowler. And maybe just a touch of tiredness in Gillespie's bowling at the moment, as one can imagine, into his 10th over. We saw that in the first test where McGrath took the first four wickets. He and Gillespie had long spells at the start. Then as the day wore on, that's how you play a cover drive. Cut shot, lovely shot in front of point. You know you're in good form, or you know that you're hitting the ball well when you can cut the fast bowler in front of point. Well, that's a magnificent stroke. He just stood there, waited on it, and stroked it in front of point. You see that stroke, that is a class shot. And that is a sign of a man in form, coming off 160 odd in a provincial match. Just wonder, they rested their fast bowlers last weekend, David, and I just can't for me think why they didn't play in, in the provincial game uh, leading up to this test match and uh, Lux of Fortune two consecutive boundaries and that time perhaps just not using his right foot as much as he should have more of a standing in the same spot and attempting to cut as to think from getting across to the line like he did the previous delivery so the 50 comes up for South Africa with that boundary. They go to 4 for 51. As you can see, he goes across to cut, not like the ball before. And they're uh, getting the bottom edge and away for boundaries. They have a bit of luck in this game. That was well clear of the stumps, of course. And... Out. What a catch. He's hit it flush into the helmet. Now, Garrett Cullinan is staying there saying it hit the helmet of Matthew Hayden, so that won't be out. Cullinan knows what happened. I think, to be fair to the Australians, they're just reacting to the fact that Matthew Hayden was able to clutch the ball. You're asking, did it hit his helmet? Cullinan knows that it did. Umpire Kirsten is going to umpire Venkat. Ian Healy is coming down and saying, well, did it hit the helmet first, second, or last? Which won't matter. If it hits the filter in the helmet, and you can't be caught off the helmet. Daryl Cullinan knows that. Instantly he just stood at the crease. Can't blame the Australian players. It was a fantastic effort to catch the ball before it hit the ground, because he has pulled that pretty well. First thoughts were to look to the boundary. And if you watch Daryl Cullinan's reactions here, well, Matthew Hayden's not too displeased. He certainly knows what happened, and he would have just told the truth. He would. A very honest young man and it's a terrific decision that because I, I don't think you should be able to get any advantage at all from uh, helmets and other advantages that allow you to be closer in than you would otherwise be because you feel safe lovely shot that is uh, arguably the shot of the day so far footwork perfect and just leaning into the shot, not even a thought of moving out of his crease, Daryl Cullinan. Once again, showing what exquisite skill he does have when he's in form. Very good play with the quicks. Left foot to the pitch of the ball, and you just can't, can't teach kids. Just a better... Just a better way of playing a shot to cover. Look at that, just got in the middle of the bat, and it's just jumped on. But you really have to make the bowler bowl to you, but you have to be in the right position to make the choice. This man has been Cullinan. And he's out, so he's not in the right spot there. The floating slip has come into place and not over the ball at all, Daryl Cullinan. We saw the cover drive earlier in the over where he leant into the shot. On this occasion, the ball just short of the foot 
and just no foot movement, no weight transference at all, and Shane Warne just wandering between second slip and gully takes a catch. The floating slip here wasn't to the pitch of the ball, just short of a length. Wide edge and straight into the midriff of Shane Warne. He said, thank you very much. And now South Africa are really diabolical trouble at, at 5 for 70. Gillespie from the park drive end. And over the top of that floating slip. A bit of an ooh and an ah from the Australian slip fieldsman. But if you're going to go out and have a dash of the ball short and wide, you've got to really give it something. And that's exactly what Gibbs did. So no complaints there from the fielding side. Short and wide. Gets up and under it and just gives it the kitchen sink and goes all the way down to the third man boundary. It was a bad ball. Deserved to get dealt with. There he goes again, and uh, that is crunch to the backward point boundary. So you can't give good players width. You certainly can't give them width with any bad length, and that was a combination of both there by Gillespie. So he's just starting to find his feet after lunch here. Short one, and back and across, and bang through backward point. It's gone all the way there, and just look at his back foot. Back and across, and on his toes, and just ripping it through point there. Australia have got to be a bit careful not to try and overtack too much. Just got to let the game go its natural way and just bowling line and length and just wait for a mistake. If you try to press too hard, sometimes you give short balls and, and let Gibbs actually hit it away for four. So it's got to be careful. And second slip. Oh, you don't see Mark War put down too many catches at second slip. And uh, that is a rarity in world cricket. So one of the unusual heights for the ball to come, one of the difficult heights to adjust your hands to and your fingers to, and Mark Wall cannot believe it, and neither can Jason Gillespie. Now the back foot was a problem, didn't get across. See, the back foot wasn't there, and the back was away from the body, and oh, he just tried to baby it into his hands, and he just can't believe that he's dropped well. What a great camera angle here. Wide, and he just washes it straight in. It was a bit quicker than, than he thought there. Mark Wall, I tell you, very rarely drops one of those catches. And that's out now. Herschel Gibbs was the man who was dropped by Mark War, but that's made a mess of his stumps. And Herschel Gibbs has bowled with one that was well pitched up, cutting back from Gillespie. I think he's bowled better, funnily enough, since lunch than he did in the first spell. He picked up two wickets before lunch. He's bowled a fuller length since the lunch break. And it's been very successful. He's had the catch taken, one dropped, and now he's knocked over Gibbs. It's indecisive here with the footwork. Just at the end, just trying to ride it, and he was beaten by pace and picking up that off stump. And been a tremendous day so far for Gillespie. Four wickets, and as Greg mentioned, could have quite easily have had five. Gibbs was dropped at second slip. But uh, the Australian getting his fourth wicket and Gibbs out for 31 and South Africa 95 for six. Let's hit him on the pad. Was there any bat in that? Yes, no, he's given it out. Very slow.